We need the Department of Education. No, we Absolutely don't. Absolutely not. Okay, then why do we have it? Everybody I talk to about the Department of Education says we don't need it. But why do we have it? We're taking money from Tennessee and sending it to Washington, and then they issue it back to us. Because you have a media that, unfortunately, if people see it on TV or they hear it on TV, they tend to believe it. So as soon as you say, I want to close the Department of Education, they trot little school children across the Capitol steps, and Dan Rather and all of the media elites get up there and go, they're trying to hurt our children. They don't care about the children. Mm -hmm. It's all about the children. Well, no, it's not. It's all about the bureaucracy. It's all about the teachers' union. Not the teachers. The teachers are, are, are hardworking people that do a yeoman's task. But these unions spend millions, I mean, think about it. when the NEA spends millions of dollars lobbying for abortion rights, what does that have to do with teachers? What does that have to do with a teacher working in a classroom in Bradley County who doesn't have enough supplies to, to take care of her children? Why should her money be siphoned off to pay for a fight over something that has nothing to do with education? Well, let's, let's, let's define this as, Let's define it as what it really is. All these departments and bureaucracies are about control. They're about maintaining control, controlling what your children learn, where they go, what you do, what your taxes are. This is a this is about control. It's not really about education. I mean, the NEA in their own in their own statements say that the children belong to the state. And that, uh, and that the parents are only the holding pad, only the holders of the children. It's in their own documents. So in reality, they don't consider your children to be yours. They consider you just to be the one who raises them. And in the states, you, they actually belong to the state. So why would you not eliminate this type of bureaucracies that are about nothing but control? On federal level, I'd agree. You know, we can handle it right here in our own state, I think. Well, that's actually the argument. The, the, the Constitution doesn't really allow for the feds to be involved. You know, and Republicans for years have tried to do something with the funding. They'll always say, oh, well, you're going to cut the funding. Republicans in the 90s, we pushed hard to do block grants to the states. Instead of having the Department of Education send money to Tennessee for this program or that program, we wanted to just give a block grant to the state and say, you figure out how best to educate your children. Because the closer to the classroom you can get that money, the better. It also wiped out a whole level of bureaucracy. Of course, as soon as we proposed that, the Democrats and the national media said Republicans look to slash education funding. We were actually given more money. We were just avoiding the federal bureaucracy. Uh, there, there's all kinds of issues here. Hillary Clinton, when she before she was first lady, she worked in uh, legal services. She actually pushed legislation that would have allowed children as young as seven and eight years old to sue their parents with, get this, a government-provided lawyer because they didn't, weren't getting what they needed or what that child wanted. Now, she was able to sell that from the standpoint of, oh, it's all about the kids. But if you've got an 8-year-old suing his parents with a government-provided lawyer, who's really got control? The government lawyer. Yeah. And that's what that was about. All right, caller. Anything else? Uh, that'll work, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, you know, the issues of, of school spending, you know, they, they keep talking about raising taxes here in Cleveland doing a wheel tax, <clears throat> you know, they put it on the ballot in the way it's worded on the ballot. There's nobody ever going to vote yes for a, for any kind of new tax. I don't care. Well, I know you and I may not entirely agree on this, Steve, but, but ask me, answer me this. Why is it not an appropriate question to say, what happened to the sales tax increase? No, I agree with you. Because you told us no, if we did the sales tax you. increase, that that would take care of education. Yeah. Well, what happened to that? That's right. Where'd it go? Yeah. Now... Now, you know, if, if there was any new tax uh, uh, put on similar as a wheel tax, it should be for the road structure. Well, that's, I, you know, if you increase the road structure, which increases the ability for companies to come, which increases the ability to hire more people, which increases the disposable income that you can then tax that's through right. a current tax structure, right. you get that. And on top of all of that, how are you going to staff this new school you're going to build? Where's the money going to come to hire the teachers, to buy the paper, to buy the Internet? Where's that going to come from? Yeah. Go ahead, caller. You're live on Whoop. I just have one comment. Go ahead. I wish somebody would shoot Newt Gingrich. <laughs> I think he's coming back. I think he needs to be shot. I think I he's wonderful. Him. I think he's great. 
I watched this thing on him last night. Well, tonight you're going to get to watch him in prime time. Debate tonight. Well, I may, I may be shoot my TV then. Right. <laughs> I, do, I do not like him. All right, Red. All right, bye. Thanks. Anyway, uh, Red brings up. Well, before we change, you know, we built we built two new big, I guess, science wings on some right. of these schools here. Well, one's fine arts wing okay. and one's a fine science arts, wing. one's tax. I mean, uh, science wing. You know, <clears throat> we keep adding on, adding on, and adding on. It, it's it's amazing to me. Is there a need for? Well, you know, see, last week I mentioned about my son's freshman class being a bump class. Right. I have found out from school board members that that is the actual class that they're using to project the numbers they think they're going to need. The problem is, from what I was told, the elementary school numbers are either flat or actually decreased a little bit. So you're using your biggest class, because classes fluctuate. One year you'll have more, one right. year you'll have less. Right. You're using your biggest class to decide capacity of capital expense, capital outlay, when it, in fact, may be lower a year or two down the road. We don't have these kinds of discussions. Anybody that wants to have that kind of discussions just gets the crap beat out of them as being against the children. Right. I understand. I understand. I mean, if anything said negatively about this, we're against the children. Well, and the worst, so you talk about tax dollars, both school boards at times have authorized printed paper, to be sent home to support, like the, in, in the sales tax. There were assets, taxpayer assets, that were used to lobby, basically, the parents at home to support this. Now, whether you were for the tax or against the tax, I personally find that fundamentally wrong. You, you do not take taxpayer money and use it to lobby and campaign for more taxpayer dollars. It's wrong. That money is supposed to be used to educate my child, not to politically argue with me. And they authorize that. And I think that was actually ethically and morally wrong. All right. Changing the subject a little bit, early voting's underway, and we're headed for Super Tuesday. Uh, I think the primary runs through February 28th in Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee is among 10 states holding the uh, the presidential primaries on March 6th. Who will come out on top, John? In Super Tuesday? Yeah. Well, obviously, Newt Gingrich is really counting on Super Tuesday. He's he's looking to Tennessee, Georgia, Alabama, several of the states down here. Um Right now, some of the polling indicates that Santorum is, is up in several of those states. Santorum may have peaked at, at a good time. Um, I, ultimately, it's hard to say. I think there's still a lot of momentum probably with the money. You, you look at how much money that Romney has spent. Uh, it's very difficult to overcome that. Santorum has not been really the focus of a lot of that until recently. Um, I, from what I've heard in Michigan, now that he's being targeted, his numbers are coming down, Romney's numbers are coming up. I personally am, am running as a delegate for Newt Gingrich. Uh, I, I love to listen to Newt, and I love, even if you disagree with, with things he says, the fact that we're talking about things is a good thing. The fact that you can actually say something and have a debate is a good thing. You, you can only, only good can come out of discussion. Uh, so this idea that we run by soundbite, we run by slick produced uh, commercials, I think that's part of what's killed our, our country and it's killed our ability to elect uh, people that can actually make a difference. Well, you know, uh, Rush Limbaugh is predicting Newt to come back again. I think there's a good chance Newt will come back again. I, you know, we're, we're, we, we have a pretty extensive <laughs> network in Tennessee that we're working to make that happen. They're saying that, what was it, Newt came out the other day and said that if Romney loses Michigan, that uh, 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 the, the, the hunt's back on again. Uh, a lot of people are worried if Romney loses Michigan that, that he really is in trouble because he had won that large. That's a, actually considered sort of a home state for him. Right. Uh, they were now, now, let me say this. I'm a solid Republican. I want the guy we've got in office out of office. So I will work hard for whoever the nominee is, but right now I'm working hard to make that nominee Newt Gingrich. Well, um, I noticed that our governor uh, is uh, behind Romney. And uh, he came out publicly and talked about it. And, uh, you know, I think our governor is a, is a good governor. I think uh, uh, he'll do a good job. You know, I'm like you. Whomever the Republicans nominate, I'm going to get behind. 
so early, but I like Newt myself. Well, the lead singer of Megadeth is supporting Santorum right now. So. <laughs> well, what was it? They, uh, they're they saying that if Santorum wins, that that would be like feeding um, fire to the Democrats. I'm not sure. Well, a lot of people think that if Santorum wins, it actually helps Romney in the long run. They think that the odds favor Romney because of the money, because of the established um, campaign network that he has, and that if Santorum wins, it just shifts what Newt had over, and Romney eventually kind of the tortoise and the hare type uh, argument wins. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it's very difficult to tell who's going to win. I do think that probably in the next two or three months, we'll probably be settled somewhat. Mm-hmm. Uh, what about the Equal Access Bill? Have you heard about that? I have not read a lot about anyway, that. Anyway, the Equal Access Bill, I was reading about it the other day, and uh, that is a uh, um, a bill uh, uh, till the Equal Access to the Public Property Act of 2012. They've run through, uh, through Tennessee over here, and the bill was passed in response to Occupy Nashville movement. Uh, uh, camped at the legislative plaza. Basically, they passed a bill to get rid of that. Well, I mean, one of the problems with the Occupy people is they claim, oh, well, this is all about public property and we have a right to it. Well, the problem is the rest of us have a right to it, too. Uh, and I think uh, that, I wasn't familiar with the name, but that's Eric Watson's bill. And Eric pushed hard for that. Eric, if you ask him what he's seen outside his office window, he's seen some pretty disgusting things. They have an employee that actually got urinated on by some of the Occupy people. Uh, this is not about protests. This is not about your First Amendment rights to address your government. This is about people that are pushing other people's rights uh, to the ground and out of and, and what's really frustrating is they talk about equal access and they talk about, oh, we have a right to this, and then they say, well, we may move to private property. Well, I got a little word for them. The name for that is trespassing. So people that think they have a right to come on to private property as well fundamentally don't understand that your rights end where someone else's rights begin. And, you know, I think Eric did a good job. Uh, that actually, that um, occupies one of the older, larger occupying uh, movements in the country. And I've been up there and seen it. That plaza is a beautiful plaza that's all of the people's plaza. And when you walk on it now and there's 90 tents camped on it, uh, what happens if I want to stand in the corner where one of those tents are? I have a right to do that just like they do. Uh, that tent blocks me. It's one thing if you're standing there for five minutes and after you leave, I walk over. But when you want to camp there for four months, you're trampling on my rights. Well, you know, that's right. I went down I went down to Chattanooga. I was down there, and I saw camp, I mean, tents set up. They tore the yard up. There's tore the yard up. I mean, it's just crazy. And what was happening, there was, there was uh, 15, 20 tents down there and about 10 people. Well, I've been told at Occupy there's about 90 tents, and at, at one point there are only four people. That's right. I mean, it's just amazing. Uh, 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 I mean, I like to camp. Maybe it's just these people that like to camp sometimes. Well, I suggest <laughs> they go to the National Forest. That's right. That's what we have them for. Anyway, uh, we've uh, finished another day here on Backfire. Uh, Franklin Jancy had to leave a little early on us today to go heal his, lick his wounds, I guess, uh, John. I thought y'all did a good job this morning. I uh, appreciate you coming in every Wednesday morning uh, in Franklin and from 7.30 to 8.30 for this show called Backfire. This is Steve Hickson, the Dough Man, and uh, we'll see you next Wednesday. Bye-bye. So from Hong Kong, and Hong Kong for the last generation, I made you have a choice. Dot com, the Republican candidate I did for not governor. have sexual relationships. I realize that this is something that we have to be able to solve our problems.